Kommissar, that's Icelandic for may you come happy. It's a very traditional Icelandic greeting. And that's kind of the topic that I want to talk to you about today. Uh, I am super inspired by the two people who came before me, and, and I'm sorry that my presentation is not going to be as awesome, but hopefully you'll stay for the next one. Uh, so I will be talking about coming happy. So what, how can an entrepreneur be happy? So there's a slight angle um, sort of pivoting into what I want to, the gist of what I want to talk about. It's not the four habits of a quasi-successful middle-aged entrepreneur kind of thing, but it's just bits and pieces that I've picked up um, over the past few years that seem to have made working as an entrepreneur, doing stuff as an entrepreneur work. So um, all things in life, they affect each other. So what I do in my personal life affects my life at work and, and vice versa. So the important thing for me is to keep all these things in balance and be aware that, that all of these things that I'm doing every single day, they have an impact all across each other. And how do I maintain the balance? So when I, in 2018, my co-founder and I, we decided to embark on this journey of creating a new bank. Uh, with my sixth kid on the way, I decided to leave the, the cushy, plump paycheck job at a bank. And I had long into this uncertainty pool that is starting a company. I got questions like, have you lost your mind? Do you have any idea what it costs to create a bank? Do you think the FSA is ever going to allow a new bank to operate in Iceland? How many of there are you? Two. No, it's not going to happen. And this was from my mom. Other people had way different myths that they adhered to. And yes, embarking on this journey, uh, leaving the, the cushy paycheck and all that kind of stuff, that was the exact opposite of what I had been doing. There was no guaranteed paycheck. And yes, I knew from the beginning that it was much more likely to fail than to succeed. But something in me said, well, at least I have to give it a try. I, I have to go for it. So when I started, I learned probably the most valuable lesson I've learned. That implies that I've actually learned it. I'm probably never going to learn it, but I I'm getting there. And it's very difficult for me. And that is, it is OK not to know everything. And the older I get, the, the more I realize that I don't know stuff. But it's still important. But with the banking part, starting a new bank, I was not worried about the banking aspect per se. I know banking. I've been there for years. My, my partner, Trikve, has been there for years. So we understand how banking works. But as an older entrepreneur, you get all these different sort of myths thrown at you. Well, you're not gonna get, never going to get any funding because all the VCs are looking for the next Steve Jobs. OK. Uh, it's a very lonely journey. And you have to be at work 24-7. And how can you do that with five kids and six kids, the sixth child on the way? Well, I didn't really buy into that any more than I bought into the fact that people said, you can't create a bank because it's too expensive. Well, how much does it cost a bank? I don't know. I just know it's expensive. It doesn't really help me. You're never going to get a license. Why not? Uh, because. Yeah, because is not an answer. So I just sort of shut that out. Said, well, I'm going to do this, this on my own terms. The VCs, yes, they're looking for the Steve, next Steve Jobs. They are never going to find her. She's out there, absolutely. Just like there's always somebody out there who wins the lottery, it's just not going to be me. And the VCs are not going to win the lottery. So if you go looking for it, you're not going to find it. Uh, so I said, well, I'm just going to settle for trying to do the best job that I can. And I will let my actions speak for themselves, not my PowerPoint presentations. And I will just take it one day at a time, and we will see where it leads. Yes, it's a lot of work. But here is the crucial thing. A lot of work does not necessarily mean long hours. So my wife, she works a very demanding job. So it's usually me who drops the kids off at school. It's me who picks them up from school. And the 
the day that is not spent at work, I am spending doing other things. And that is, that is absolutely crucial. So when I'm with my kids, they have my attention. It's not just go outside and play because daddy has to work. That is not how I want to lead my life. My kids, they're not looking for the next Steve Jobs. They're looking for the best dad that they can have. And that is a role that I want to fill, fulfill as well. So I do grocery shopping, I clean the house, uh, I do a bit of carpentry. I'm horrible at it, but I still like it. Uh, I play golf, I work out, I train little kids in Taekwondo for some odd reason, because that's, that's a, th it's a thing. So am I a slacker because I arrive at work just after eight and I leave just before four? No, I, I don't think so. And I think Into proves that, that I am not. But you see, when I'm doing all these other things, and I'm, I'm sure that you feel the same way, when, when I'm doing other stuff, it helps me problem solve stuff at work. But for me, the key is not to think too hard about those things. So in the back of my mind, when I'm working out, or when I'm building Legos with my kids, or when I am in a particularly difficult part of training six-year-olds in difficult kicks in Taekwondo, something might click in my head, say, ah, that's how I should do it. That's the solution. It's like writer's block. It unblocks itself if I'm not trying to force it. And that's, that's a method that works really well, well for me. So shutting off from work is crucial for me. And I think it's for you as well, because being mentally out of the office, it is OK. Is it a lonely journey? No. For, for me, it isn't. Not really. Uh, yes, there are things that you think about and worry about that are work-related, and you, you can share them with others, but they are yours to sort of bear. But I don't think that's lonely. That's just life. That's just what being an adult is. I've never felt lonely at Indo. And un unfortunately, uh, my co-founder is here in the room today, uh, and I am probably never going to hear the end of this, but without him, there would be no Indo. Uh, we've known each other since we were kids, and we bicker all the time. So he brings out the worst and the best in me, and I probably in him as well. And when it was just the two of us, and then we slowly added to the team, one of the first comments that we got when we were arguing about things is, is can I leave the meeting now? Because you're actually in complete agreement, but you're like two old guys at an old folks home. You're just yapping at each other. You are, you're saying the same thing. And that's a method. That, that's actually what we do, and we get better results out of it. So find somebody to share your journey with, but who also challenges you. And sometimes just to get on your nerves, because that's important. So without Trigve, my co-founder, there would be no window. Just absolutely not. It would never have gotten, gotten off the ground. Now, I love to learn new things. I think learning new stuff is awesome, and we should never stop learning new things. But it's important to know that because you know things doesn't mean that you know everything. And knowing things does not make me right. One of the, the things that I feared the most at work in, in life is being surrounded by people who think I am awesome and who think that everything that I do and think and all the ideas that I have are just the best things in sliced bread. And just are completely, always completely cheering me along. Being surrounded by yes people is my kind of hell. Just have people around you that challenge you. Because you're not always right. If, if you are always right, and you always make the right decisions, you're doing something wrong. And if you get the feeling that you are just always hitting the jackpot, always getting things right, the other shoe is going to drop. Things are going to blow up. So make sure that you have people around you who keep you in check. So what I've tried to do, not at Indo, just everywhere in life, is to surround myself with people who do not agree with me, who say, Hugo, you're wrong. In fact, I did a hire last week, uh, an old colleague from, from one of the banks, and one of the key issues, or, or the key things that, key reasons for me to hire her, apart from she being a, um, an excellent uh, professional, is that 
I worked with you before, and you told me I'm an asshole, and I don't know what I'm talking about, and I need that. I need somebody who says that I just, I'm completely out, just in a ditch with stuff. It's difficult. It is difficult to listen all day long to people telling you that you might not be right. But it is essential. And knowing that it is essential will usually, always, lead to a better outcome. You will make better decisions when they've been challenged. That, that's, that's my view. And don't try to do everything yourself. That, that's one of the big, big lessons that I've learned in Indo. Uh, we have always been a small team, and people have always been doing a lot of things with many hats. But don't, if you have an amazing idea, get awesome people on board as soon as possible. Because that's how the idea grows. It's like a plant. You have to nurture it. If it's a seed, you have to get it to grow. Once it's a big plant, it, it kind of takes care of itself, but the initial stages are really, really important. Now, I've been very lucky on my journey to get amazing people on board. The timing was right. The, the stars aligned correctly. And just like with Trigvi, without every single one of those persons, Indo would not be what it is today or what it will be a few months from now. Most of them do work that I don't even understand. I, have, I know nothing about engineering and even less about marketing. But the people that are doing that are the best in their field. I might have opinions about what they're doing and challenge them, but at the end of the day, they are the professionals. So what is my overarching goal as a founder? We, we all have different goals. Like Denise said, uh, an IPO might be a goal for somebody. For me, it's making myself redundant, making myself completely unnecessary for Endo. That's my goal every single day. So being physically out of the office should be OK, because there are people that I've hired that I trust to do things. So when a function rests on my shoulders, and when we are starting out, all the functions rest on your shoulders. But then you have to hire people to take these functions and do them, and then you have to step out of the way. So at the right time, hire the right person, get the person to do the job, and then just move on. Find the next thing that you have to do. So step by step, every single day, you're making yourself unnecessary. For me, as a founder, I've said my, my, my management style, if, if I have one, is I just try to stay out of people's way. I do not want to stop people who know what they're doing from doing the good stuff for Indo. So, after all, if, if I don't trust the people to do good work, why did I hire them in the first place? So it's not me with all the answers. I am not indispensable for Indo. I've never been and I never will be. But I'm indispensable for my kids. No, that's not me. <laughs> I am much more than Indo. And we are much more than the company that we founded. And our companies are much more than ourselves. I, Indo is much more than I. There is a commonality, but I think it's smaller than I think. So in order for me to grow as a person, I have to foster all these things that are in my life outside of Indo. I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, I'm a trainer, I'm a spouse, I'm a friend. In order for Indo to grow, Indo to grow I need to grow these things. They are really important. So there has to be a balance in life. Being out of the office, both mentally and physically, is not only a good idea, it's absolutely essential for me. Thank you.